Okay, I want to speak a bit about a uh, law I just read about in Florida. And I want to also use this opportunity to clarify a few things from one of my previous videos connected with the issue of guns and um, gun violence. And this is something I've got quite strong views on. And um, I know there will be people watching this video um, in the United States who say, well, you're a foreigner, why should you care? I've always argued that the internet is sort of like a, a reflection of an interconnected world. And it's true. Gun laws in America don't personally affect me. That is true. At least not physically speaking. But as a human being, I do have concerns when innocent people suffer. And the way I see it, a lot of innocent Americans are suffering because of lax gun laws. Um, I would para quote Piers Morgan, I care because I, I like America. I like Americans for the most part. Um, and I want to see fewer Americans being killed. Um, he also got a lot of slack because obviously he was Britain and he was um, living in the States. Anyway, um, without going off on a tangent, what I want to clarify from the last video, I noticed a few people um, had responded. This is a video I made quite a while back, um, but got quite a lot of response. I, I can't remember exactly which one it was. I made a few on the subject. But one of those videos, anyway, um, there were people saying that they were a member of the NRA and they are not crazy gun fanatics. What they were touching on was a few things I said in the video. The firstly, I'm a man of conviction and I don't... Um, I generally don't say things that I don't mean and on the rare occasion that I would do that in a heated moment I would uh, take it back or apologize for it but this is not one of those moments I I have no issue whatsoever calling for example open carry crowd um, fanatical I, I know that might offend some people but I think uh, what they represent is far more offensive um, uh, you know, if they're happy swinging their guns around and um, going into a coffee shop or a leisure centre or wherever it is they feel they have a right to bear arms, um, then they should take some of the criticism that comes with that. I mean, there's a big issue here in this whole gun debate. It's this obsession with the Second Amendment. Well, my question is, what about the First Amendment? What about the right for detractors and pro-gun control people to um, have their views on things? And I'm not just speaking for myself there, because this is the internet, there's nothing they can do about it anyway, but I'm talking about Americans who do have concerns about this and who do want to speak up, but they're bullied and silenced by the gun lobby. I think that's unacceptable. What about their First Amendment right? And the issue I'm going to talk about directly relates to this. Um, the state of Florida has passed legislation that prevents doctors and those in the medical profession from discussing gun safety with patients. This comes after a number of patients felt that it was a violation of their um, privacy. Um, I've looked a bit into this and uh, not it's not all uh, uh, what it seems. On the surface a lot of people will think well yeah it's uh, patients have a right to privacy. What, what business is it of the doctor to know whether they're gun owners or not? Um, I'll put a link to a video made that was made for by some doctors to clarify their position. Um, obviously, as a gun control supporter, I'm absolutely in control of any common gun sense legislation. But what people are misunderstanding about this, the sort of it's been labelled by some segments of the media as docs versus glocks. The idea being that doctors are having a sort of issue against guns. Well, the interesting thing about the video I watched was that a number of doctors are themselves gun owners. And this is not an issue about um, telling people whether or not they should have guns. But they are professional people and they have a professional responsibility to give counsel to patients. And sometimes gun ownership is relevant to that, especially if children are involved. Especially if, um, for example, there may be a domestic violence situation. And if guns are in the house, um, you know, a lot of American women get killed every year from a violent partner and very often guns are involved. Um, and many children get killed every year. 
So as a professional, I would say doctors are well within the right to um, have that medium of uh, speaking to patients about this issue. Now in the last video, um, there were people who said they were NRA supporters and they were taking issue with being called fanatical. And I'll just clarify that. Um, I am not calling every gun owner a fanatic. I'm not saying that for a second. I'm not even saying people who have membership of the NRA are fanatics. I'm not saying they're bad people. I do think they're being used and I think they're very naive if they can't see the problems with the NRA as an uh, organisation and if they can't see the fact that uh, the NRA leadership, the leadership, I'm not talking about grassroots members, but the leadership have any other interests except uh, their profits. It's a business and that's all they're interested in. You know, the NRA loves to pretend it's the victim, it's the underdog standing up to big government. Um, the truth is the NRA is a very powerful organization. To what extent its power is um, is a matter of debate, but it is a very influential organization and um, it has continuously tried to bully not only the American people, but um, anyone who dares speak up against them. Um, and they've always hidden behind the Second Amendment. I think that's despicable. The fact that whenever anyone even tries to talk about gun control, the NRA automatically play the victimhood card and say, oh, they're trying to take away our guns. Well, I have never seen legislation that, that has actually taken away guns from people, from law-abiding Amer American citizens. If, if someone could actually provide evidence that a law-abiding American citizen has had their gun taken away from them, then I might listen. Otherwise, it's just empty talk and it's used as scaremonger. I also appreciate that the United States um, has a gun culture. There is uh, guns are very popular in certain states, and by no means that I think that every gun owner is a a crazy potential spree killer. Of course not. I suspect a lot of people are just normal people. They have guns for a variety of reasons. Some people enjoy gun sports. Some people really do genuinely feel it's practical for protection in one's house. Although I don't see why you need an AK-47 for that. Um, because if you look at it, you see, I, I honestly believe that a lot of grassroots NRA people don't really realise the extent of the NRA's arguments. They look on the surface at the issue of gun ownership. And they look on the surface at things like, um, well, basically, they I believe they're taken in by scaremongering, things like, oh, if you support gun control, that means guns are going to be taken away from you. It's very, very possible to support gun control measures whilst at the same time uh, being a comfortable gun owner. I don't think it's a contradiction. And I know of many gun owners who actually do support common get sense gun legislation. My question to American gun owners would be, why are you being allowing yourselves to be puppets of the NRA? Why are you allowing yourselves to be um, absolutely guided by what the leadership of the NRA says? Shouldn't you think for yourself? If you really care about freedom and liberty, shouldn't you be thinking about yourself rather than a major corporation, which is what the NRA is? In my view, it's a lot more than that. It's a very dangerous organisation. And I, have no, I make no apologies for any harsh words about the NRA leadership. I believe they're dangerous, I believe they're reckless, and I believe they're selfish. So I've got, I make no apologies for the the top tier of the NRA or the likes of Ted Nugent or Wayne LaPierre. Uh, I've, I've no apologies whatsoever to make about that. If low level um, grassroots people who happen to own guns misunderstood me, um, that's regrettable. I won't apologise because I know that I wasn't attacking them personally. It is regrettable that they misunderstood, but frankly that isn't my problem because in all my videos I make it clear that I'm not against all gun owners. You know, if I'm uh, if that was the case, hell, I I'm not even against guns per se. I'm sure that uh, it can be an enjoyable pastime shooting off a gun at a range, but it is also indisputable that guns are a massive problem in America. And that should not be a controversial statement. It should be a matter of fact statement, which is what it is, actually. Um, I'm going to leave it there, but I just think this is a ridiculous law. And apparently a federal court upheld the Florida law. But w what about the doctors 
First Amendment right to freedom of expression? And what about their professional rights um, to feel that they can counsel a patient? I mean, there may well be circumstances where guns do play a direct role in um, their procedure, especially if someone, for example, has been injured by a gun. I mean, that seems ridiculous. If someone has been involved in a shooting incident, it's going to be pretty difficult for a surgeon or a doctor to not bring up the issue of guns in terms of treatment just because um, it's argued to be a privacy case. What if the person involved has young children? I, I don't agree that this is a privacy case at all. I believe it's very valid. It's not as if the doctors are saying, we're going to take away your guns. As a medical professional, I believe it's their professional judgment to ask about that. Um, in the same way, if someone was a drug user, um, you know, the doctor would need to know those details. These are, it's not about privacy being breached, it's about common sense. So I strongly support the doctors in this one, um, which probably isn't that surprising, because, you know, I'll, I'll probably always take a position of gun control versus um, the NRA. This is not about doctors versus guns. This is about doctors versus the NRA and the NRA trying to bully and silence them. Because like the video shows, a number of the doctors speaking that are themselves gun owners. So why on earth would they uh, be against guns? Because that would affect them as well, don't you think? I mean, this is what uh, some people really don't stop to consider. If all gun control activists are against guns, then how do you explain the fact that a lot of them are themselves gun owners? Wouldn't that be a bit of an own goal? You know, why would they support something that supposedly, in your view, means that guns are taken away? That wouldn't make any sense. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of scaremongering, I feel, from the NRA about what con gun control means. All gun control means is common sense logic. And I, I, I cannot grasp how any responsible gun owner would have a problem with mandatory background checks. And this isn't even a party issue because there's many people, and both the Democrats and Republicans that see this, um, and many other parties, smaller parties albeit, but the, the point is it isn't even, and it shouldn't be a partisan issue. From what I gather, even the uh, governor of Texas recently, Rick Perry, and believe me, I have very little in common with Rick Perry, but even he, um, I believe, signed into law uh, some gun control legislation. And the gun control groups uh, gave him credit for that. Um, this shouldn't be a partisan issue. This should be a common sense issue. And gun owners shouldn't have... It. You know, I feel there's a lot of gun owners living in a siege mentality. Because they buy into the NRA propaganda that uh, the government's out to get them. And therefore that's what creates the likes of open carry. Now I have no sympathy with open carry. I, I, and I make no apologies for saying they're deranged people and they're potentially dangerous people. I make no apologies for that. Because if you are so paranoid that you feel you need to carry a firearm into a public place, threatening and intimidating your fellow citizens, you might think it's for protection. You might think it's harmless. But, you know, I'm not even going to try to reason with these people because I think a lot of them, frankly, are beyond reason. So this video isn't for them. Um, this is more for people who may have misunderstood my last video and to uh, basically think that gun control is about trying to take away guns. That's not what it's about. It is about common sense legislation. It is about the First Amendment having freedom of expression. And I will sure as hell support any American's right to condemn the gun lobby. Because guess what? The Second Amendment is not the only rights Americans have. And it is certainly not the only, um, it, it certainly doesn't trump the First Amendment. And, um, you know, okay, I'm not an American citizen, I'm a foreigner. But like I said, I care about this because I think far too many Americans die unnecessarily. I'm not saying that uh, gun control universally would stop gun deaths. I'm not saying that. And I've never tried to say that. Uh, in countries of tough gun controls. It doesn't mean that there's no gun deaths. Uh, here in the UK we do have gun crime. Um, Canada has gun crime. But actually, it's worth noting that I came across a statistic yesterday. Uh, 
one of the world's most violent cities, arguably the world's most violent city, is a place called San Pedro Sula in Honduras. That even trumps Ciudad Juarez in Mexico. Now, um, gun, the gun lobby like to say, oh, well, look at Mexico. They've got gu tough gun controls and Mexico's a very violent country. True. Well, guess what? Honduras is even even more violent country and they're very lax gun laws. Apparently, um, San Pedro Sula is awash with guns and not just the police. Gangs are absolutely um, awash with these firearms. That city... And it's not a huge city, it's got a population of about a million. So we're not talking a major, major city. We're talking about a medium-sized city. It has 187 gun homicides per 100,000 people per year. That works out in actual terms, probably, doing a bit of math here, probably about a 1,000 homicides a year. That's staggering. It makes even uh, high homicide rate American cities look safe. And by compared to European standards, that is terrifying. I, I can't imagine what it's like to live in a place like that. Um, so, you know, that that knocks that theory dead. That when the gun lobby try to say, well, look at Mexico, they've got tough gun laws and it's a very violent country. Okay, well, I say, look at Honduras. According to this report, Honduras um, has very lax gun controls. And I trust a freelance reporter, um, frontline report, I should say, uh, over the gun lobby, which has a vested interest in keeping guns at all costs. No, I shouldn't even say that. It's not about keeping guns. It's about keeping their profits. This is what people need to realise. The NRA is a business. Anyway, I'll leave it there.